Hey guys, it's Coach Sane here, and in this video we're going to be explaining how to make your robot perfectly follow a line using the Spike Prime Word Blocks app. So following a line is a very helpful tool to make your robot accurately drive on an FLL map, you know, towards certain missions or just in general for education purposes. So in this video we're going to be explaining from top to bottom how to create the perfect line follower. The first step before programming is making sure your robot actually has a color sensor. So the color sensor placement is quite important, as you can see over here. It's just below, but not too far touching the ground. So normally one to two of the Lego holes off the ground is enough, um, but make sure it's not too close either because it relies on a sensor reading that flashes to the ground and then flashes back up. So if it's too close, those readings won't be correct. And if it's too far, they won't be correct either. Once you have your sensor ready to go and it's all plugged up, you're ready to start programming. So this video is going to be sectioned off into a few different parts. After this introduction, I'm gonna give a very short explanation as to what the line follower actually is and you know the logic behind the programs we're gonna be making. Understanding this logic is extremely important. In fact, it's more important than actually knowing the program because if you understand the logic, no matter where you are and what situation, you'll always be able to fix your program or make it from scratch all the time without this video actually. So I highly recommend watching this short explanation uh, and then moving on to the programming part. However, I'll leave timestamps below so you can skip around if you really want to. So without further ado, let me jump into the explanation on the iPad. Okay, so we're over here on the iPad and now what we're going to do is explain how the line follower actually works. So before we actually go into you know the, the deep um, crux of the line follower, let's see what the line follower is actually following. So some people have a pretty um, simple misconception. They think the line follower is following this black part of the line or this white part of the line. Actually, that's not true. It's following in between the black and the white. So that's the really first important thing you need to know. What is the right line follower actually following? In between the black and white. So why is this important? Well, the reason it's important is because the first thing we need to do is actually calculate the light intensity we want to follow. So as you can see, uh, we have a small demonstration of a color sensor over here. So how this works is the color sensor actually emits one light here. So it's like a, a light blue light, I'll change my color to green, a light blue light over here, and it emits that light downwards. That light will then get either absorbed or reflected depending on the color. So you may know from science that white will reflect a lot of that light, which as you can see in this blue, that'll be a higher percentage. And a black will like absorb most of that light. So with the light blue, if it's over a black light, um, a lot of this will basically get absorbed. And of the percentage, so if 100% of the light is reflect, like is gone down, maybe like a low percentage over black, like 50% will go up. Whereas if it's over white, a higher percentage, because it, it really reflects, not absorbs, that will go back up to the color sensor. So this is the first really important thing you need to know. And before we actually do the line following, you first have to get your value, your number of what you're gonna follow. So what I've got here is a simple explanation of how to get your value. So the first thing you're gonna to have to do, as you can see over here, is go to the top left section and you'll see the ports. From there, you'll click reflected light on whichever port you have your color sensor plugged into. From there, you can now push over slowly, slowly, slowly that light. So as you can see over here, the color sensor on the right is being now over black, so it's about 26%. As I move it over to the left, you can see that number goes up to 50, and now it's in between, which is about 73 or 80. This is exactly what you need to do with your robot. You need to see what number is perfectly in between the black and the white. So with that being done, we can now move back to understanding of what's going on, right? So as you can see here, I have my target value of about 70%. For you, this may be somewhere different, but it will be pretty high, right? It's not gonna be somewhere like low, like 20 or 30, because Spike Prime robots see black at about 50% and white at about you know, 90 to 100, which means the in-between, uh, between 50 and 90, is about 70%. So let's now go on to the explanation, right? We know that this value over here, in the green, that's gonna be about 70% reflected light intensity. So when the robot's traveling, what it will do, it will first go on this black line, right? It's gonna follow up perfectly. But then slowly, slowly what happens is it actually veers off track, right? It may go onto the black. What happens when it's onto the black, to the 70? Does it read 70? Actually, it doesn't, right? Because the current intensity, as you can see here, it's gonna go downwards because uh, black absorbs a lot of light. So if it's onto the black, what we're gonna get is a reflection value of maybe, let's say 30. So I've put it at 30, just for the sake of explanation, um, as you can see here. 
So what we do is we use a rule. This rule is 70, which is the in-between, minus whatever it's reading currently. So in terms of the uh, example that we have here, that's going to be 70 minus 30. What is 70 minus 30? 70 minus 30 is simply 40. So what this is, right? Basically, this is going to be the steering power to go back. So what this red line is going to do, it notices, wait, hold on, I'm too far on to the left. My steering power, I'm going to apply a 40% steering power to then travel back there. Now let's do the opposite, right? Let's say it keeps going, but then it veers off to the white now. What does it read on the white? So on the white, we know that it's a higher number. Let's just say it's about 90. So what's our rule going to be? Our rule is going to be 70 minus 90. So 70 minus 90, this is going to be negative 20. As you can see, we're now going to steer back the other way, right? It's a negative number, which means the steering is now going to be toward the left. And this is how the line follower works, right? If it veers off to the black line, it will notice it's gone down, so it's going to go to the right. If it veers off to the white line, it'll know that the light power has gone up and it'll steer back to the left. And this whole, you know, this zigzag motion you see over here, it's quite common to see in line followers and other things. This is what we call proportional logic. If you've already watched the Jaro Straight video, um, then you'll know that this is quite common. Proportional logic simply means whatever mistake you make or whatever mistake the robot makes, go back in the other direction, right? So if it's veered too much to the black, move back into the middle. To the white, move back into the middle. And it does this with the simple rule, as you can see over here, 70 minus the current intensity. And this rule is actually going to be applied in the program, which we'll come to see later. So that's the basic essence. The one thing that we haven't discussed is something called the LFPK. So what we do, right, when I'm going to delete most of this stuff, as you can see over here, I'll delete the red. Okay, perfect. So what we're going to do is I'm going to explain the LFPK. Essentially, what the LFPK is, it's, it's a number, right? I'll explain it further in the program. But essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply this correction that we just explained, right? This correction over here and these examples multiplied by a number called LFPK. This is called the line following proportional constant. It basically improves the rate of correction or decreases the rate of correction. So I'm going to use two examples. I've got example one in green, and I'm going to do, let's choose purple, for example two. For example one, let's do correction. So whatever the correction is, it doesn't really matter, times 0 0.5. And actually, let's make that 0 0.5 in green just to match it. And for the other one, I'll just copy paste it over for the sake of time. And let's do it for the second one. Let's do a correction of uh, an LFPK of 1.5. So this is how I'm going to explain what the LFPK actually does. In the first situation, as you can see, it's about 0 0.5. The rate of correction is going to be low, which means your line follow is going to look like this. It's going to be very curvy and it's going to, you know, slowly get back into direction. Whereas if you have a higher number, so that was situation one, let's do the purple situation, which is a high LFPK. It's going to be, you know, very zigzaggy, as you can see over here. So it's going to do more corrections because the corrections are happening faster. Now, the actual answer is somewhere in between. So you don't want something too high and you don't want something too low. And I'll go into, you know, how to find the perfect LFPK in the programming. We'll do some actual tests later in the video. But that's pretty much it. If you understand proportional logic and where this LFPK number generally, what it generally does, then you're pretty much ready to start programming. So let's go back onto the laptop and see how we can code this. Okay, so we're back on the computer, as you can see, and I'm just gonna flick over to the Spike Prime app. Now we're gonna start creating this line follower and we're gonna create a new project to do so. So we're gonna click word blocks and we're gonna start and we have our project here. If you're unfamiliar with this whole program environment, I highly recommend watching the introduction video that I made. I'll link it somewhere up here. Um, so watch that and then come back to this video. So I'm going to assume you know kind of some of the blocks and you know the moving blocks and um, Not necessarily the sensor blocks, but you know just a basic understanding of how to program the word blocks So the first thing we need to do is set up like normal. So as always we're going to need to set our movement motors and I've got mine connected to A and E Highly recommend making sure A is on the left side and E is on the right side if that's your robot. So on your robot, if your left wheel is actually connected to the A, make sure, as you can see on the screen, A is on the left side of this you know, rectangular purple box and E is on the right side, or vice versa. So now that we have that set up, um, we're going to make sure that... I forgot to make sure my extensions are clicked. 
So go there. Now we're going to set our break. However, we're going to make it hold position, which is quite a normal thing to do. Um, and now we're going to get into, you know, the real meat, the core of the line follower. So we need to control the distance somehow. And the way we do this is using something called relative position. Relative position is simply the degrees counted for this wheel when the program starts. So as soon as it starts moving, the total amount of position that it's moved or relative to its starting position, that's just, you know, you can think about it as just degrees counted. Now that that's done, the core of the line follower is actually in a loop. So a loop is right here. So we're gonna to go to the control tab, pull out the loop, and a loop essentially repeats an action that's within the loop over and over and over again until a condition is satisfied. So with this, we're gonna do the internal part and then I'll explain you know, what the condition is. So what are we repeating over and over again? Well, as you remember in the short explanation on the iPad, basically we're gonna be correcting the robot every so often so that it stays on track in between the black and the white line. And to do this, it's actually pretty simple. It may seem a little bit complicated at the start, but I'll explain all the parts. So I'll very quickly just you know put the base in. So we're gonna be moving, and this straight angle here is what's gonna control whether the robot's gonna correct at a certain point. But obviously we can't just set it to a certain number. We have to set it to a sensor value that's reading off the map or the line, right? And the way we do that is we pull out an operation and a minus sign. We then go to our sensor and we're gonna pull out our color sensor and we're gonna read the reflected light. So make sure this sensor is in the correct port. I have mine in C, so we're gonna click that. Gonna go there. So we're gonna put the sensor in minus and then we're going to read off a value of 70. So what is this 70 value? Basically, this is the value in between the black and the white line as explained in the explanation. So what I recommend is for you to go onto your black and white line and put the robot right in the middle of those two and then on the laptop, see what comes up. So it should come up in this top left section over here. For me, I'm getting a value of 70 and normally with Spike Prime robots, you actually get you know higher values somewhere between 60 and 80 is pretty decent and it works pretty well. Even as a value of 50 is pretty good, but anything you know below the 50 to 40 region you may not get as accurate results. So try a few different, try to do three different reflection numbers. So this is what we call the reflected light value or the target value, right? So this is the target value 70 and we're gonna minus uh, that from the reflected light. And we're gonna plug this straight into this straight block over here. Finally, we're gonna set the speed. So the speed needs to be at a lower number because line followers generally can't be too fast. Um, you can get them to be pretty fast if you have a smaller, more agile robot. However, you know, if you want things to be really accurate, particularly at the start when you're learning how to use it, set it to a lower number, so 25 is gonna be pretty good for us. And we're just gonna put this whole loop into there. So what are we doing? We're traveling at a certain speed, 25%, but we're also correcting throughout that point. And when you're driving straight, you wanna set three, three things. So you wanna set how you're going, so straight, curving, you know, what angle you're moving at, which we have over here. As you can see, it's plugged into the straight. We have the speed, which is 25%. Uh, for now, it says power, but actually what we'll do is we'll briefly change this block. So we'll make sure this says speed and not power. So we'll go over here and we'll take this out and we'll pop it in there. Finally, we'll set this to 25%. We'll take the power block out and we'll put the speed in. So everything's all the same. I just changed um, from here to speed and from there to power. The only reason being is sometimes, you know, power is not a regulated number in Spike, so it just kind of throws out the maximum amount or whatever you put it, whereas speed actually, the, the hub actually regulates the power to make sure that it has 25% speed the whole time. That's why I highly recommend going for speed over power. So as we mentioned, we have the straightness. So if it's going at a straight angle or a curve, so we have that, we have the speed. The only thing we don't have is actually how much you wanna move it forward. And that's where this repeat until block is gonna come into play. So as we said, the distance is gonna be something called relative position. And you can calculate that with this little block over here. Make sure that this A is set to whatever the wheel is. So only one of them, I have mine in A and E. So you can use E, you can use A, the left or the right, just choose one. So I'm just gonna stick with A because I've got that up here as well. And essentially to control how far we're gonna go, it's going to be a greater than block. So all we have to do now is plug this into there and plug that into there. So what will this do? At the moment we have this to 100. This number is the degrees that your line flow is gonna run at. 
So for example, if you have it to 360, this is going to be 301 rotation of this wheel, which is only, you know, a little amount. Normally in a line pool, you want to travel like the whole line, I guess, that you see on the FLO map. You know, somewhere a thousand is a pretty good measure just to get started, I guess. So we're going to keep that at a thousand. This loop is going to run until the wheel has hit a thousand degrees. And what is it going to be doing in that time? It's essentially going to be correcting itself along the line. And that's it. That's the, this is the basic line follow. Now, this isn't exactly perfect. There are a few different things we need to do now. In fact, there are two things we can do to upgrade this line follower. So the first thing you probably notice already is that this is going to run until it's greater than a thousand degrees. So it may go a thousand and ten, a thousand and thirty, until it actually stops at a thousand. So what we're going to be doing to correct this is actually putting an equal sign in there as well. So we're gonna go here, gonna go all, and we're gonna pull out an equal sign. Oops, there we go. And we're going to go back to our more, pull out relative position again, and make this a thousand as well. Plug this into there, and take this whole thing, put it into there. And we're going to replace this whole thing into the repeat until. So as you can see, what this loop says is it's the loop is going to continue until the motor A has reached a thousand degrees or greater than a thousand degrees. So if it hits a thousand exactly, it'll stop. If it skips over a thousand, which it sometimes tends to do, it may go 980, 990, 999, and then a thousand and three. So if we only had this equal sign here and not this, then it wouldn't stop because it hasn't hit exactly a thousand. This is greater than is our safety measure, but we have the equal to just to improve the accuracy of the stopping. So this whole, you know, the condition here, this is the completed version. There is still one last thing we need to do to this line follower, which is very easy. If you watched the gyro straight video, which I recommend you do because that's equally as powerful as the line follower. We had something called the GSPK, which is the gyro straight proportional constant. That's a bit of a mouthful. We'll now put this in here and we're gonna create something called the LFPK. So this number here, I'm gonna keep it at one for now, is called the LFPK. And we can pop everything back in here. So all we did was multiply this, this correction and I got the multiplication block from here. It's the third one. Now I've put it in there and now we have this number one. So what is this number here? This number is the rate of correction that the, it's gonna make on line follower. So for example, if it's a lower number, if it veers off track, it'll slowly go back on track. Whereas if it's a higher number, it'll quickly zigzag back on track, I guess you can say. So normally on a spy crime robot, that zigzag motion is pretty normal. So a higher number like two will cause that. Whereas, you know, it's not always the best because if you have your mission model over here in FLL, and it's a little thing. If you're zigzagging, sometimes you may be off track this way, sometimes maybe off track this way. So it won't actually complete the model. That's why we need a really fine tuned number. So with this robot, a value of 0.4 works well for me, um, just on a straight line. And we're gonna run this and we're actually gonna see on a straight line how this performs. So just to reiterate, we have our degrees at 1000 up here. We have our speed at 25%. Uh, we have a reflected light at 70. This number won't change. So if you want to change the distance, you change these numbers. If you want to change the speed, this number. And we have our LFPK, which is the rate of correction at 0 0.4. So let's see how this performs in a straight. So as you can see on the straight black line, it did really well. Um, it just basically followed the line. And that wasn't a perfect line, as you can see. You know, there were little zags in here. It's made out of tape. So it's not the perfect straight line like you'll see on an FLL map, but it still performed really good. Now, if you have a more of a curve, right? 25% speed is actually a pretty high number. So if you perform that more of a curve, as you can see on that last video, there was like a curve on the other side. We're now gonna try to run this robot on that curve, but you need to change two things. You need to change the speed because it needs to go slower so that it can actually follow that line more accurately. So we're gonna drop this speed down to, let's say 15. And the other thing you need to do is with a curve, you want it to make sharper corrections, right? So we're gonna increase this 0 0.4 to 1.5 because that's the number that improves the rate of correction, I guess you can say. So with that being said, this is now the uh, updated line follower, but this will now operate on the curve as opposed to just a straight line. So let's see how that performs.
So as you can see, I, I tested that a few different times and it worked pretty well, but I didn't just magically, you know, arrive on these numbers like 15% speed and 1.5. It took me some time, it took me some trial and error. You know, I may have tried like 10% speed here and 1.2 here, and it may not have worked as well. Uh, so, you know, increasing the speed or decreasing the speed, normally a lower speed works better, but not too low so that it doesn't have enough power to move on the surface and a higher LFPK, but not too high, so it doesn't just zigzag around the place. It's a very fine tuning process, so you need to take these two numbers and really tune them out, uh, test one and then test the other one. What I recommend is just set this number to one, right? So it's just multiplying the number by one, which is the same thing, the correction number, and then choose the best speed. Once you have the correct speed and you like the speed that it's going at, but it may not be working perfectly, then take this number and change it a little bit, make, make it higher. Right, and if you're seeing better results, make it higher again. If you're seeing better results again, increase that number until you get worse results. At some point, you hit a point where it's just too high, and then go backwards again. So move it forward, maybe to 1.7, it will start performing not as good. So you know 1.4 worked well, 1.7 didn't work too well. It's somewhere between 1.4 and 1.7. Um, and that's where the number of 1.5 essentially came from. So set one to set the LFPK to one, and then adjust the speed and then adjust the LFPK to make it work. Sometimes you need to then go back to speed and fix it again and so on and so forth to make sure both of those numbers are working really well. But I guess that's the process with line following. It's not just as simple as pressing the play button. There's a lot of programming involved to make it work. So that's pretty much it for this video. As you can see, it was a pretty simple process when you break everything down individually, but there's a lot of understanding that goes on behind it. So it's really important that you understand this program. And if you've understood the gyro straight, you'll know that the line follower is actually a very simple process in terms of its proportional logic. Um, it just means it's gonna correct back to a certain value or a certain number that's dependent on the map or the rubber position. So that's pretty much it. I'll see you guys in the next video.